everyone. Today we are here for another episode of the Good Vibes Show, and this is a very special occasion for me to meet Lieutenant General Dipinder Singh, who is our guest today, and he is an Army veteran, a former Army commander, and former MA to Field Marshal Sam Manekshaw. Sir, welcome to the show. Thank you. And sir, you'll uh, pardon me if there are any inaccuracies in what I say, but whatever you say from the heart, we will just imbibe, we'll, we'll be inspired. And people watching this show, basically they're looking for inspiration. Good. And uh, I want to ask you, sir, how's been the journey? It's a very, it's a question that requires a long answer, but if you were to encapsulate it in a few sentences. Well, the journey has been very satisfying. <clears throat> and uh, I must mention that, call them Mahapurches or whatever, mm -hmm. in different religions, I've been meeting them throughout my service. Sir. And uh, their kindnesses have always been there. And uh, secondly, I think <clears throat> every boss I've had has been remarkable, helpful, a good teacher, and uh, very amenable to any request I made, that sort of thing. And uh, then, of course, it is fate which arranges various things, how you fit into a group, which group you go to, like that. And uh, the bosses, as I've said, I've had, I've been particularly good, very sympathetic, very helpful, good teachers. Especially Field Marshal Manik Shosa? Well, him, he was a particular kind. And uh, with him, it was more, uh, he showed me glimpses of his brilliance. And uh, he was always very sympathetic towards his subordinates and people around him always be thinking of their welfare. But uh, <clears throat> uh, a very good husband, a very good father to the two daughters they had. And uh, for me, a marvelous boss. I mean, I couldn't have asked for anything better. To give you an example, if sometimes I'd be in a little bad mood, he'd immediately be able to gauge there's something wrong. Right, sir. So he'd keep it to himself. After a little while, he'll come up behind me, put his hand on my shoulder, tell me, sweetie, I've got this new tape. Would you like to have it? It's this, this, this. Okay, sir. And so that he knew he was sure to break the ice with me. <laughs> and I'd say, yes, sir. <laughs> <clears throat> In the film, sir, your character you are played by uh, an actor, of course. Yeah. And uh, the film Sam Bahadur has done pretty well to showcase yeah. the personality of yeah. Sam Manekshaw as yeah. well as your presence. But obviously, we can't learn enough from a short film. So how much do you think uh, the film has portrayed uh, justifiably? Well, uh, I mean, like... Uh, uh, his reactions to Mrs. Gandhi's uh, directions that he carry on in service after he relinquished yes, office. Um, <clears throat> that could have been brought in. And although in one of the interviews, or one of the talks he was having with Mrs. Gandhi when he was telling her that I must go Sir. Because all my officers go at a certain age. Yes, sir. And I have in, gone over that age, and so I'm still here in service. So, 
she would say, no, no, you don't bother, you carry on and all that. And uh, one day she got fed up. She said, Sam, you make me so angry, I feel like slapping you. <laughs> Mrs. Gandhi said. Mrs. Gandhi. So he promptly replies, sweetie, you can slap me, I still love you. <laughs> <laughs> so only he could have had the moral courage Absolutely. to say something like Absolutely. that to the Prime Minister. So, <clears throat> and uh, he was very forgiving. Once somebody said sorry to him, he closed that chapter. Okay, sir. Except in the case of Krishna Menon. Krishna Menon. Uh, after Krishna Menon had left office, one day in a, at home at Rashtrapati Bhavan, they were both happened to be climbing up the steps together. Krishna Menon and Sam Manikshaw. Sam Manikshaw. I'm a little behind Sam. And he looks at Krishna Menon and says, Good morning, sir. How are you keeping? And a oh, good afternoon, actually, it was afternoon. How are you keeping? And he says, oh, I'm doing all right. And then he says to his wife, Silu, this is Mr. Krishna Menon. You remember him? So promptly comes the reply very abruptly from Mrs. Benikshaw, no. <laughs> <laughs> well, she, she obviously had more <laughs> angst. She, she, she sort of harbored more of the grudge. And she could afford and, to express it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and he was too much of a gentleman to do so. He was too much of a gentleman. Mm -hmm. He didn't like Krishna Menon. He made no bones about that. But uh, still, he was gentleman enough not to make it obvious. What was Jagjeevan Ram, sir? How was he with him? Jagjeevan Ram initially was... Uh, very good, particularly during the war, because Mrs. Gandhi had given orders that whatever the chief wants, give him a free run. So any weapon systems, tanks, guns, anything that he wanted, he would just go into a meeting of secretaries. He never attended that meeting of secretaries. He would just go in there and announce that Gentlemen, I've just been to the PM. I've got her to agree to the import of 100 tanks or whatever. Okay. Okay. And uh, I now leave it to you to decide how to get them, when to get them. But I want them by so-and-so date. And after seven days or ten days, I'll come meet you all again and ask what the progress is. Amazing, sir. And he would walk out. On another occasion... H.C. Sareen, Secretary, big defense. chap, yeah. uh, he was the defense secretary that time. So he was, both of them were coming to attend a meeting of, uh, uh, there were some army officers, some bureaucrats in the ministry's conference room. So there were two doors. Mr. Sreen entered from one and he shouts at an officer sitting in the far corner next to a window. You there, open that window. An army officer? Army officer, some major. So that, there was, when, when Sreen shouted like that, there was absolute quiet. This officer sort of push, pushed his chair back try to stand up, and another thing comes, then another shout comes, sit down. <laughs> and then he addresses Sareen. Sam. Mr. Secretary, you will never address any one of my officers in that fashion again. Wonderful, sir. What leadership? His name is whatever. You ask him his name and tell him, please open that window for me. Tell me, Sam, open that window for me. I'll open it for you. Sir. But you cannot say you there. So this kind of leadership, this kind of uh, persona, which Sam Banakshaw had, very rare, very forthright, very witty, but that larger-than-life Sam 
is evident to us now through the film, through other things. Yeah. But talk about Sam the man a little more. What endeared him to you so much? Um, well, <clears throat> he was the army commander Sir. when I was commanding my battalion in Chilong. So on his first visit, he came, comes up to Guwahati and from there he was to take a helicopter or a lighter plane and come up to Shillong. But the weather was very foul so they couldn't do either. Sir. So he waited for about an hour or so, the weather didn't let up, so he went back. So I write to him that I'm sorry you couldn't come uh, last time, but I hope you'll come again. But I must tell you that I made full use of your impending visit uh -huh. by getting the staff, MBS and all that to do so many things. <laughs> All the maintenance and, and the now <laughs> when you come a second time, I'll be able to get more done. Yeah. Very smart, sir. <laughs> so he calls me up from Calcutta. He says, I've got your letter. It never struck me that you could benefit so much from my tour programs. So he says, what I'll do is hereafter, every month, my staff will send you a tour program that I'm coming there. <laughs> and... Uh, a day or so before that, we'll cancel it. <laughs> and you get everything get that everything you want done that. on that pretext. Yeah. Sir, in this so book... So, like that. Sorry to interrupt you. This book, Sir, Soldiering with Dignity, which you have authored, I have been going through it. Yeah. And some wonderfully inspiring lines, some wonderfully inspiring pictures. What I want to read out, Sir, is the mention of uh, Field Marshal Manak Shaw and how you have described his qualities. So I'll just read out with your yeah, permission yeah, one yeah, please, paragraph. Please. The manic show qualities that I have attempted to portray make up the formidable combination required for success. A prodigious capacity for work, a fascinating raconteur with charm and persistence, an irreverence towards red tape, an iron determination, an eye for detail, plus a strategic mind that embraced all, yet imbibed the essence, and above all, a shrewd, sympathetic, and sincere ability in man management that came naturally. How well written, sir. You obviously loved the man, and, and um, I mean, and there is no, there is no exaggeration here. No, no, no exaggeration. I mean, this came from the heart, and all this, this book is all from memory. All from memory. And even now you're speaking after decades yeah. about these uh, mean, incidents. <clears throat> when uh, the book was written, it was written after our retirements. Sir. And uh, then when I told him that the book is ready, the draft is ready, but I want to show it to you before I get it published. So he said, give it to me. So he took it. Then he says that, uh, you know, uh, there are a lot of mistakes, a lot of errors. I'll do the correction in great detail, uh, but uh, it'll take time. So I said, perfectly all right. I'm in no hurry. And uh, so he takes it, and about half he edited. Um, there was a lot of red ink. On, uh, on the pages where he'd made corrections and so on. <laughs> he added various things. Sir. And uh, uh, then he kept it. And he gave it to me after a few years. Okay, sir. He said, now you can publish it. So I don't know what the idea of all that uh, delay was, whether he felt that uh, the time was now ripe or uh, at that time, if the book had been released, there may have been more questions. Controversy, yeah, controversy so, yeah, 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 yeah. So, so, so. so I don't know, but he was like that. No, he was obviously a visionary, but the 71 war, sir, the surrender of 93,000 Pakistan troops, to what extent was it just because of Sam Manekshaw's presence and assurance? Well, one was uh, <coughs> the 
messages he would send to the Pakistanis through leaflets. Through leaflets, airdropped. Airdropped. So this is from about the 10th day onwards, we knew that the war is about to finish. Right, sir. Because we were bypassing a lot of opposition, getting in behind the people and approaching Dhaka. And only difference was that his concept was occupation of maximum territory. In Bangladesh. In Bangladesh. So that when the ceasefire thing comes from the United the Security Council, we could leave most of Bangladesh with the Bengalis. Right, sir. Uh, but in the event uh, when these three pincers from the west, east and north uh, converged on Dhaka and the Pakistan leadership got a little jittery. Yeah. So before we could go further, they surrendered. Right, sir. And, uh, but their surrender was initially, it was just that we will surrender and then we'll pack up and get out. So, his orders were that no, this will be a surrender without any terms. Right, sir. It's a full-fledged surrender and uh, you hand over all your weapons and ammunition and everything to the Indian Army. And uh, <coughs> uh, so that came, for, came in for a lot of uh, criticism. Criticism, right, sir as did the people asked that why did you intervene in March when the, yeah, yeah. The, when that, the Pakistanis that, first cracked down. Well documented, yeah, true sir. So his idea, his idea was that he was not ready at that time. Monsoons were around yes, the corner, sir. the passes were opening in the Himalayas, the Chinese could intervene. Yeah. So, and then main and the biggest problem was that the world at that time saw the whole problem as an Indo as a Pakistan problem. It we had nothing to do with right. it. Right. They were in their own country. Right. So that had to be changed. Mm -hmm. So this is what he told Mrs. Gandhi when after uh, she'd heard all her ministers sort of thumping the table and saying, we want to go in straight away and that sort of thing. And then she asked him. So he got up and he said that, I'm so glad you asked me. At one time I thought that you're going to play, um, what was that? Uh, some play which Shakespeare had written and uh, without the hero. Macbeth, sir? Uh, Is another one? Okay. I, I think. I'm not very sure. All right, sir. Hamlet remember. or whatever. Right, sir. So, then he went over the whole thing. He says, all my troops are dispersed in elections. I have to get them back, marry up with their formation. Yes, sir. Supporting arms and services make up the deficiencies, he says, because we are very deficient of tanks, artillery and all that. And uh, more than anything else, he said, okay, this is, at the moment, for world view is that it's a Pakistan problem. Right. So we have no business to be intervening. So you have to go and get it changed. Right, right, right. And so it happened uh, in December, sir. No, this happened in Ma in April. Then this was April, and a then April. we waited. Then, then, so uh, at the end, she told all the ministers, "Okay, you can go." And then Sam gets up and goes up to her, and he says, "You want me to resign? Uh -huh. If you like, I can 
write a letter that on grounds of health I want to <laughs> go. She said, no, no, of course not, Sam. You are absolutely right. And uh, so, <clears throat> uh, he got his time. And If I can interrupt and say, sir, politicians are good at thumping desks, like you said. Yeah. And Fauji's are good at thumping the enemy. Yeah. And which you did. Yeah. But Mrs. Gandhi displayed leadership here. Absolutely. Absolutely. She did. Did you meet uh, her often, sir? Oh, we meetings? used to meet her very often. And uh, she was always very charming, very sweet. And uh, of course, a very commanding presence. Even though short stature? Yeah. And uh, I mean, nobody could take liberties with her. Even Sam? Even Sam. <laughs> Except him, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Sir, I'm interrupting you because I want to talk about you now. And uh, one of the very unknown, largely less talked about feats of the Indian Army was under your leadership in Sikkim. Please tell us about that annexation of Sikkim. In brief, sir. You see, uh, when I was in Sikkim, we had the Chogyal, who was an honorary lieutenant colonel of my regiment. The head of the province. Uh, the, who yeah. was the so, yeah. ruler of yeah. Uh, yeah. Sikkim. And uh, the government had given him that rank as they had to all Maharajas. So, and he, uh, Sikkim at that time was part of the Chamber of Princes. Right. So that came in very handy for Mrs. Gandhi when the annexation was to take place. She said, you are not independent because you have been a member of the Chamber of Princes. So how can you be independent? So, that, but the Chogyal was full of fun. He'd, that be the uh, ambassador there, Sir. and uh, some of his bureaucrats with him in his house, and he would say, suddenly announce, I got, I got a call from the Chinese <laughs> and uh, they want to do ABCD. Mm. And uh, so now he knew that this would all go to Delhi <laughs> that <laughs> night <laughs> and uh, alarm everyone. And sure enough, next day there'd be queries, what happened, who, who spoke to him and why and all that. So he was always uh, uh, creating these little jokings, uh, jokes and things right, with the idea of creating mischief. But then you were told, to were given orders for something, sir? So then we just got orders that my, my job was disarm the Sikkim guards establish roadblocks all around so that nobody goes out, nobody comes in. And uh, so we did that. You make it sound very simple, sir. Uh, <laughs> well, <laughs> uh, but uh, uh, my first job actually was to get hold of the commander of the Sikkim guards. Right. He was from my regiment, my battalion. Oh and my course mate from the IMA and uh, I had to get him out because he was a Gurkha and a very tough Gurkha at that. So the worry was that when the disarming troops go in, he might raise his voice and say, okay, get out from here, ah, what right. are you doing? And somebody right. shoot him. Right. So I had to get him out. So before the whole thing started, I asked him over to the house. Okay. To my house. And I said, now you stay here. Don't go out because <laughs> there's going to be trouble. Trouble. And uh, he was very annoyed with me. But uh, anyway, his wife said, okay, you did the right thing. Because I know my husband, he would have... Lost his school and... Lost his school and somebody would have shot him. So... <clears throat> Uh, luckily, we did all this with just one 
fatality. Okay, sir. Uh, the sentry on duty, when the troops went in, our troops went in to get inside and take over the courts and all that, he had his rifle, so he picked it up to shoot. Okay, sir. And the one of the paratroopers who was going in, he shot him. Shot him. Had to. So, he had to. <clears throat> and uh, the Chogyal came rushing out when he heard the shot. Saw this boy on the ground. Takes, puts his hand on the blood coming out. Oh, puts it on his forehead. And uh, so I wasn't there. I, I was in the background. And uh, I didn't go anywhere near the palace, sir, because as soon as the thing was over and we reported to the um, ambassador and there was uh, 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 the foreign secretary was there and all that in the group. And uh, and he was a friend. Adios, uh, the Chogi also. Uh, and he was a great friend of ours. And so you didn't want to kind of... Uh, so I, they, I went and told them that the disarming is completed. Sir. Now you can do whatever you want to do. So they said, no, now the next thing is you go in and bring the Chogyal out. <laughs> so I said, no, I won't do that. Very you embarrassing. You send my GOC. <laughs> Very embarrassing, yes. So they said, okay, we'll send the GOC. So the GOC went in, he got, got him out. Right, sir. But and that was uh, because of a shorter time, we can't go into more details, but it's something that is an achievement. Uh, and bloodless, so to say, bloodless, except for one shot fire. Except for one person. And one person. So, I mean, your career, sir, uh, was it one of the major high points? Well, that was one of the high points. I wouldn't say that was the highest point. I wouldn't point. say that either. Uh, <laughs> of course, the 71 war yeah, and everything, sir. Because as soon as this was over, I told the deputy chief who was there that I want to get out now because I can't face the Chogyal. Sir. We were so friendly with each other. And uh, so he posts me to Bhutan. Sir. So Bhutan, everyone was eyeing me with suspicion ke to ye kar ke hai. <laughs> Bhutan mein he, now he's come here. He is, next he, Bhutan go, is, he go, is he going to do the same thing here? <laughs> so there was a lot of surly faces around me I all see, the time. I see, I see. And one day I went to the king. And uh, after the business talk was over, I said, Your Majesty, I've got one other problem. Uh, how do I entertain you? You can't come to my house, you can't come to my mess. And uh, so what do I do? I have to yes. uh, do something to entertain you. Sir. So he says, no. Uh, the, up to that time, he used to call me brigadier. Sir. But then he said, no, DP, nothing like that. You, Whenever you want me in your house, you let me know, oh, I'll come there. So how nice. So I said, sir, whenever you want, Your Majesty, so he said, can I come at 4 o'clock today? Okay. So I said, you're most welcome. <laughs> so I went. Madam, I to be in a tizzy, sir. So I went, told my wife that the king will be coming. So she got busy in the kitchen. And suddenly she discovers two chaps, Bhutanese, walking into the kitchen. Oh, I see. So she, she said, who are you? What are you doing here? He said, we come to taste the food. Oh, taste the food. Uh -huh. So she <laughs> said, okay, you think that we will poison your king? Poison <laughs> the Chogyal? Get out. So they left. Oh, God. So immediately message flashed off to the palace that the Wife. Food, food tasters have been thrown out. <laughs> thrown out. So anyway, he stuck to his program. Four o'clock he arrived. First thing he did was apologize to me. He says, please tell your wife, I'm very sorry that the two Four men came. And Obviously, and he didn't the send them. He, yeah. No, that was the custom. This was the normal custom. So he says, okay, it will never happen again. And after that, it really didn't. 
So madam, since uh, a life without the backing, the support, the love of the better half cannot be as successful. Bilkul. So her presence in your life, talk about it. <clears throat> well, she was the daughter of an army officer. And uh, the marriage was at uh, the instigation of uh, another officer of the Gurkha, fifth Gurkhas. So, instigation. Who, who, who was uh, known to them, to that family, known to me. So. so, he told me that there's that girl there and why don't we take up a case and get you married to her. So, I said, okay. <laughs> I was a bachelor at that time. <laughs> Okay. So, and he, of course, uh, embellished it by saying she's very pretty and all that. So I said, okay. So the marriage went through. She came in. And uh, the first day in Diradun, I was posted in the regimental center that time. Uh, she, I left in the morning to go to work and I get a call there from her that your dog is not letting me get out of the bedroom. <laughs> <laughs> She's sitting in the doorway and as soon as I go there she growls and I have to go back. Suspicious of this person. <laughs> yeah. And uh, this was an Alsatian I had. I see. And uh, but after that. Uh, so many years together. She, so. she was looking after the dog so well. Looking after you so well, sir. Decades and decades and decades. Oh, without doubt. I mean, there's so much I miss of her. Although now we have the daughter. Uh, around, your daughter, yes, of course. And she does. And your son-in-law is an officer of the Indian yeah, Foreign, Service, Foreign Service. Senior officer. Madam, of course, left only a few years ago. Uh, she left in 22 September. Yeah, just, just recently. And, and we are in your Panchkula home, and sir. And it was just four days in the hospital and she passed away. Her presence can be felt, sir. I can feel her presence here. And your house is so beautiful. Thank you. Your life is so beautiful, sir. Thank you. You have led a life of inspiration, good cheer, good vibrations. That's why it was a pleasure to invite you on this show. No, thank you so much. You've spoken from the heart. Thank you. And that is what I was wishing to. It's not enough. We could have had a whole day. A longer session. Yes, sir. <laughs> maybe, maybe I'll come back to you for more recordings, <coughs> more writings. Certainly. More certainly, stuff to certainly, be shared. Certainly. But certainly, sir, a life well lived. And you inspire us. I'm not telling them the number, the age. I'm just saying that you look much, much younger than you are. <laughs> <laughs> Thank, Thank you, you so much, sir. Thank you.